Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, episode number 205. This is a midweek supplemental edition of the show. Coming up on the show, we have uh, Concepts full 2021 lineup is unveiled. We're going to take a look at a knife from my vault. Maybe maybe one that started it all. I know I say that a lot about different knives, but this truly is one uh, that will be in the state of the collection. And then we're going to talk about five great folding knife pairings. And of course, I can never just keep it to the number I say, so there is a runner-up in this case. Uh, might be a little bit too heavy. I think that's why it's a runner-up. But first, like we do on this show all the time, we're gonna start off with a pocket check so I can do my first little bit of showing off of the day. So today I am carrying this beast. This is the Formax Scout. You know the Formax. It's uh, Andrew Demko's answer to small knives. What else What else can I say about this? This is like the, uh, this is like the 8010 kind of stretched out a little bit. And when he did so, when he stretched the blade out a bit, he had to curve that handle to make it tenable so that it wasn't too long and so that the point wasn't uh, uh, sa uh, standing proud of the scales. This Formax was a gift to me from the great and powerful Jimmy Slash. You know him as Jimmy Slash, his name is Josh. What a great guy and what a great uh, conversation we had about XL Cold Steels uh, on both the show uh, interview show he came on and then we did a, uh, a special with him, a deep cut with him and of course, this being a gift from Jimmy Slash, I had to add a fob or lanyard because that's what he does with all of his knives. Of course, he does a different uh, a different tie, but I'm very fond of these uh, sort of knots. So I put those on there in a bright and colorful uh, pattern here. It's like a rainbow. Again, going for that sort of cognitive dissonance. You pull out this big terrifying knife, but then you see this you see this cute little colorful rainbow uh, paracord fob, and you think, oh well. It's just a friendly tool. And uh, I also just like the way it looks. I like the the contrast between the big silver and black knife and then the the light and, uh, I don't know, light and airy fob. That is also something I find on Jimmy Slash. You'll, you'll see uh, one of his giant knives there and it'll have a, um, a pink and purple paracord knot on it. And I think that's pretty cool. So carrying that. And then the second one uh, I'm carrying is uh, also a gift from a great YouTuber. This was from uh, um, Women Carry Knives, Christine. Uh, she sent this to me after I commented on how much I liked it in a review video she did. And uh, I love this thing. It's super light. Of course, it's a Vox design. Sorry, my left arm is still a little bit, uh, a little bit gimpy, but I'm going to try and use it today. Um, this is a Vox Voxnez design. It looks a lot like his other designs. You know, he has that very, um, well, he has a very specific design language that this uh, this represents wonderfully. Now, it's a, it's a GRN handle and a glass reinforced nylon handle, and it's got a nice anodized blue backspacer you can see there, a nice little thin liner lock. And actually, the blade stock is pretty stout for a little knife like this, but being full flat ground, it... Uh, it, it terminates in a pretty thin behind the edge uh, edge there. So two great knives from two great YouTubers uh, that were gifts to me. I'm carrying those today. And actually that was not on purpose. It just was uh, sort of coincidental. I reached for these two and, uh, and I realized the commonality they have. Another commonality they have is the GRN handle. Of course, Cold Steel calls theirs grivery. And there's probably some difference between the two, but basically they're plastic. And they're not the kind of plastic that G10 or Micarta is where uh, are where you layer, uh, well, in G10, G10's case, fiberglass, and then uh, compress it with uh, heat and epoxy. These are just plastic. <laughs> so uh, I don't carry them that often. I don't carry grivery that often. It's not an appealing, um, as an appealing substance to me as micarta or G10 or aluminum or titanium. Uh, but it is light, it is strong, and uh, it's on some really great knives. So that's what I'm carrying today. What are you carrying? You know, let us know. Uh, send us an email, bob at the knife junkie.com. See, it couldn't get any easier. Bob at the knife junkie.com. Let us know what you're carrying. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll let everyone know. You can also call the listener line at 724-466-4487. 
leave us a voicemail. It would be great to hear your voice. We know you're out there, but we'd love to hear you. Let us know what you're what you're carrying. We'll put it on the air. You'll be a star, a knife star, people. All right, so we're going to move on from uh, Pocket Check, and I want to talk about uh, a new patron. Uh, we got a new patron. His name is Tyler, but he goes by the great screen name as OG One Kenobi. And um, uh, I want to thank you, Tyler. He's become a gentleman junkie. And I think he was um, in search of some knife content that uh, we just sort of scratched the itch. And uh, he's pretty excited about it. So I am excited to have you on board, Tyler. It is a pleasure. And, uh, and well, thank you very much. Anyone who's willing to uh, trade money for the information we're given here. Um, well, we're both very grateful. We're, we both meeting me and Jim. So thanks very much, Tyler. Uh, there's a lot of great things to come. You will get your stickers. I'm putting those in the mail uh, shortly. And uh, you'll, you have your mention right here. We talked about you on Thursday Night Knives, but also you're enrolled for a, a very, very special kind of contest. Uh, I think you all know what that is. So, uh, and we'll be showing off what, uh, what the winner of that contest will get. That will be in two weeks. Uh, that will be on Thursday Night Knives. Uh, the date escapes me. Ah, the 15th, April 15th. Oh, that's right, April 15th. How could I forget? Tax day. My favorite day of the year. I love knowing that my money is going to a to all these great things that they're doing for us. Okay, I'm going to stop with that dripping sarcasm, and I'm going to turn to this beautiful, beautiful Kubi knife. Uh First Kubi I've ever held in my hands. This was donated to us by This Old Sword. Uh, you know him as Dave, This Old Sword Blade Reviews. And uh, well, you could listen to a great conversation with him right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, he gave us this for giveaway or whatever we wanted to do with it. And uh, I opened the package and I said, oh, Kubi, that's cool. Never seen a Kubi. Pulled it out and was so incredibly impressed. I couldn't put it down. and. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't. it looks like it should be uncomfortable to me. I swear with that, with that curved down back strap, that's why I got rid of my uh, bad monkey. It had that sort of uh, profile on the back of the handle and it, I just did not find it comfortable, but jelly Jerry, the designer of this here, Kubi, uh, he got it right, at least for my hand. And that uh, back strap the the meat of my thumb just sort of fits in there. And this thumb swale is great for gripping and uh, really bearing down. They give you an almost four inch blade, super sharp. I like the uh, the branding, the only Kubi branding. Let's see if I can get this. The only Kubi branding is right there on the pivot and it looks great in my opinion. Has this uh, wonderful green um, burlap micarta, a sculpted titanium pocket clip, a hidden lanyard post for uh, for lanyards. And, uh, you know, discreetly tucked away for those who do not like lanyards. This is a an outstanding knife. I'm, I'm really impressed by it. And uh, it's called the Raven. And I have to do more research into Kubi. I've seen a lot of really interesting and unique designs, but have sort of glossed over them in uh, some of my favorite uh, uh, YouTube reviewers videos, just because it was an unknown. And I, I don't know, I guess my mind was closed to them. But having this in hand, I'm really impressed and very excited to give it away uh, April 15th. So tune in. That's the Gentleman Junkie giveaway on April 15th, Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard, right here on YouTube. So come check it out. This, incidentally, is a knife that Jim was like, hmm, what's up with that Kubi, Bob? I, I, I really like it. I offered. I said I'd send it over to you. He said, no, no, we should put that toward a good cause. And I have to say, I really admire Jim's discipline. I would have been like, yeah, put it in the mail. Here's my address. You know my address. Get it in the mail. But, uh, you know, even though we live close, we don't live that close. So I would have mailed it to him. So, Jim, I, I appreciate your discipline. Uh, and so will the winner of this on April 15th, because they will be 100% psyched to have this thing. All right. Kubi Knives. Who'd have known? Who'd have known? I'm going to put this down over here so that I don't, uh, it doesn't accidentally matriculate into my collection. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, Dave, this old sword. Next up will be uh, Knife Life News. But before we get to Knife Life News, uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And of course, share this video if you're watching it on YouTube. 
Also, while you're there or here, <laughs> check out our other shows. We have knife review videos, Thursday Night Knives, our live stream, 10 p.m. Eastern on Thursday nights, and our Knife Junkie Town Halls, uh, where you can meet and talk to knife makers and personalities that you know and love. And if you're interested uh, in listening to this podcast uh, only, uh, like on the podcatchers and such, tell a friend, a knife friend, of course, because everyone else is going to think you're crazy for recommending a show called the Knife Junkie Podcast. So, uh, well, lastly, if you want to support the show and be a part of this giveaway, uh, the Kubi giveaway that I just showed you, or the monthly giveaway, uh, you can support us on Patreon. Uh, the quickest way to get there is by going to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit thenifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Got a couple of great new uh, knife news stories this week. Concept, or I'm I'm so tempted to say concept because of how it's spelled, but I, I'm pretty sure it's concept. Concept knives, which is a uh, newish, high-end uh, Chinese manufacturer, uh, started from someone who was over at Kaiser, and they split off to start their own venture. And they have really knocked it out of the park with concept. Uh, I'm going to just give a little uh, foreshadowing of one of the knives I'm going to show later. I fell in love with this concept. Concept, sorry. <laughs> and this is designed by K Max Ram, a French designer who I follow on Instagram. It was so great to see this knife come out by them. Uh, he's had a few designs through Kaiser, I believe, and a new one. I think he's got a titanium version of his Pelican coming out through Kaiser. This is the Concept Pelican. Uh, the Pelican knives, incidentally, uh, from K Max Ram really have this emblematic sort of dip on the back and this and this thumb ramp. And then the 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 uh, blade profiles down here change a little bit, but uh, you can kind of identify his his stuff um, just by looking at it. Okay, anyway, uh, so concept has just released their 2021 catalog and it is full. actually, I think it's completely made of outside designers designs. Um, we have some, uh, some what do you call it, standards that we're designing for Kaiser, uh, like you have Justin Lundquist, um, who's got uh, the Reverie coming out. It's an interesting looking bolstered folder. It's got some elements of Justin Lundquist designs, like right around the pivot uh, and that clip, but other aspects of it, like that clip point blade and, and just the overall uh, shape of it, look a little different for me. I'm used to the straight handle Justin Lundquist, you know, the uh, the front flipping kind drop point. And uh, this is a nice departure, I think, you know, same but different nice departure for him in the design realm. And it's also exciting to see it in S35VN and coming out through concept. Uh, but the one that I see here uh, is the second knife down on this, uh, in this article really has me excited. It's called the Kratos, I believe you would you would pronounce that Kratos by our good Polish friend Ostap Hell, who was on the show uh, incidentally, great guy, and uh, really making unique and beautiful designs. What well, what really gets me about this Kratos is that blade. That blade is amazing looking. You have this sort of Tanto esque blade, but the front portion of the Tanto is the is the largest portion. You see that big uh, belly coming from the short straightaway right after the um, flipper tab there. And then you see this long upward sweeping belly that comes to that very acute point. This knife, uh, this blade combines some aspects of the Tanto uh, and some aspects of the drop point and some aspects of the reef curve. Even, there's, even though there isn't really a recurve in this, uh, when you look at where that small straightaway is and then where it breaks into the upward curve, it has sort of the effect of a recurve, except uh, just with a straight edge. <laughs> and uh, another exciting thing about this is it's a 3.8 inch cutting edge. So it's a nice, it's gonna be a nice big knife. That's my personal uh, taste. Titanium handle with a with a 
really nice looking contour that almost looks to me like a fixed blade um, handle, something you might see on a Bowie knife. Comes in, uh, it's titanium, you got an inlay, comes in at 5.2 ounces. Uh, and knowing how much I like the, uh, the concept Pelican, I think that this one, uh, you know, combining Ostop Hell's gorgeous design with uh, Concept's amazing manufacturing, I think this knife is going to be uh, a hit. Uh, the only hit on it might be its size. You know, a lot of people like knives a little bit smaller. So I could see this one also being reiterated in a smaller size because, well, I think the appeal is heavy. Uh, there's also uh, uh, a knife, uh, two knives from Nick Swan and... Um, we have also, uh, those are in 154CM and S35, and they're little back locks. Uh, we've got Chris Conaway, and then um, Rolf Helbig, someone uh, admittedly that I've never, uh, I haven't come across with, uh, with some gorgeous stuff here. And then uh, Matt Degnan, I'm going to go to the very end. Matt Degnan, who designed the Kaiser Roach and some other great knives, uh, has this. I don't know what you would call it. It's a sheep's foot blade and they call it the Stellar. But what really knocks me out about this knife is the handle. That sheep's foot blade is, looks extremely useful and uh, it's, it's easy on the eyes, but that handle looks like, uh, I don't know, it's either going to be incredibly comfortable and ergonomic depending on the size. And with a three inch blade size, uh, I think it will be comfortable. I think if this were a larger knife, that choil would be too far from the blade. Uh, but I, <laughs> It's appealing aesthetically. I mean, that's that's where I come from. I, I think you know that. I I go for my eyes, and then I imagine, hmm, I like that knife. I love the way it looks. Now let's figure out if it's act actually a practical knife to have. And uh, this one, I looked at it and I thought, I hope it's small because of that handle. And it is. It's a three-inch blade. So. I, I ramble at this point, but my point is concept is knocking it out of the park with their manufacturing. And I think it's a really good idea to have a full lineup of outside designers. To me, these kind of companies, we, Riot, Concept, uh, Best Tech, are really doing a great service to, um, well, knife junkies around the world because they make it affordable to get behind the wheel of a designer whose custom knives you could couldn't afford or wouldn't be uh, willing to justify uh, buying. So thank you, Concept. Uh, we look forward to this, and I look forward definitely uh, mostly to that O-Stop Hell. Uh, looks, like a, looks like a great knife. All right, next, Morgan Cones. Do you know Morgan Cones? He is uh, an Insta He's on Instagram. I've been following him for a few years. He's mostly a custom fixed blade knife maker. He also makes really cool implements like uh, Indian war clubs and uh, rifle stock war clubs and and uh, trench clubs and just other things besides knives and and, and uh, large, you know, bladed things. Uh, but he doesn't really make folders. Now, about a year ago, he he had a design produced, and I can't remember who did it. I think it may have been Riyadh, but it was it was the sort of thing where you ordered it from him. And then he ordered it from the manufacturer, and then it came to you a little while later. Um, this one now, he's coming out with a uh, knife called the Togata from Best Tech. So he's having the, the whole thing made through Best Tech. And uh, wouldn't you know, uh, it is a gorgeous looking thing. Now, it's got a tanto point. It's got inlays. And... Uh, excuse me here, and uh, it has a ferocious look to it. This is a um, thumb stud knife, and it's got that beautiful fuller there, so you can open it with um, using the spidey flick. You can slow roll it out if you start at the end of the fuller and then slide your uh, thumb down the fuller, kind of like a, uh, a Medford or something like that. But it's a very exciting knife to see come out because uh, Morgan Cones is a consummate craftsman, and when you go to his Instagram page and give him a follow, you will see that he seems to make uh, knives in very small batches. He'll get excited about something like most recently, he made a batch of four just beautiful little medium-sized Bowies, like eight-inch Bowies, and it seemed like he made them overnight. Uh, 
I, I saw the blanks and then I saw the, the uh, polished blades and then I saw them fully completed and already bought. So I don't know, I've mentioned this before, I don't know if he, he takes pictures along the way and then posts them in a compressed um, sort of fashion or if he's just, uh, you know, a, a genius there. So here, here is a picture of the knife I'm talking about, the Togata. And this is in Best Hex high end. So this is gonna be about $300, excuse me, their high end line titanium uh, handle that is contoured and inlaid with beautiful materials. They have three different materials. In this case, this is the uh, this is the iteration I would get with that uh, natural tan canvas micarta. You've got that beautiful gladius shaped pocket clip. Thank God he didn't sharpen the tip. And, or I should say, <laughs> thank cones he didn't uh, sharpen the tip. And then you have that back strap that uh, that terminates in the little thumb swell and the jimping right at the uh, at the blade. Now the blade is sort of tanto, sort of clip point. You've got uh, that long swedge coming from the thumb swell that goes all the way down to the tip. But that tip is a tanto tip, and it's a long one, sort of an Americanized tanto um, tip there. And if you look at it, it's wedge-like, kind of like a Chris Reeve tanto, except there is a secondary edge on this. It's not a zero ground. Um, front portion facet there. And then you have that nice, long, sweeping cutting edge. Now, this is a 3.75 inch blade right in my wheelhouse there. And um, it's made by Bestech. And I've been very impressed with the Bestech knives I have. And uh, so I have no doubt this thing is going to be really, really awesome. So I look forward to I look forward to some of, of my friends getting this because I'd love to get it in hand right now. Uh, the next the next 300 bucks I spend is slated for something else. So I'm not sure if, if this will be coming my way because it is gonna be a limited uh, limited run. Uh, but the the Cones designed Best Tech Togata is a really exciting knife and I can't wait to, uh, to get it in hand. All right, the last sort of, well, the last Knife Life News story I wanna show you is from Baron Son. And we don't talk about Baron Son here uh, often. They're an American-based company um, that produces uh, slip joints. I think that's how they started. They produce slip joints, uh, tactical folders, and autos. And uh, the past couple of years, they've caught my attention with some very good-looking autos. They call them bolt locks, I believe. And uh, they're just, they've had some very handsome designs and that's what's kind of hmm, piqued my interest. Uh, but the materials, they've never been really known for using great steels, you know, knife nerd steels anyway. And and so I'm wondering if maybe that's what has kept them from the, the limelight, at least the knife nerd limelight. limelight. Uh, but they are now releasing these uh, this line of Cali Legal Autos. California has a lot of um, strange laws. And one of them is that if you have an automatic knife, the um, blade size has to be under two inches. Um, that's about as far as my knowledge of, of their knife law goes. And I'm not even sure if that's 100% accurate, uh, but I know that for autos, it's gotta be under two inches. So they created their line of Cali Legal Autos. Here they are in beautiful anodized aluminum. Uh, the blades are 1.8 inches and uh, they have, it looks like they have two different sizes here. You can get one that's even smaller uh, with a slightly different blade shape. And it looks like they have full flat ground and then also hollow ground blades. So uh, choose your choose your poison there. And uh, it's got a supplementary lock on the back. But what's really exciting to me is I look at this and uh, this has come up recently. They remind me a little bit of the Spyderco Rhodey. All right, stick with me for a second. It's it's not in that they look anything like it or that their their mechanisms are anything like it. But if you were to take these, fold them up, take a whole bunch of them and throw them in a, a glass bowl, they look like candy to me. I love this anodizing. You've got purple, red, orange, like a teal and a blue and of course black. And I don't know, they're just so appealing to me. And it's the same thing when you see those those Spyderco roadies all together, all the different colors they have. You just wanna like, I don't know, put them in a bowl and, and serve them at Easter. <laughs> so uh, I'm very excited to see these Bear Ops. I'm, I'm wondering, if this is in their Bear Ops line. Bear and Son has a Bear Ops line. That's their tactical stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm waiting to see the first video that pops up on this. And um, 
it's very sketchy uh, for me uh, with autos, so I don't know if I'll be getting one of those. But uh, the exciting part about this, not only is the Cali legal aspect, but they're also in 14C28N, a Swedish steel and uh, by Sandvik. And, you know, that's not a, it's not known as like a super duper steel there, but it is an excellent steel. It's been on the leak forever. And uh, it is a great uh, sharpening steel and you can hone it quickly. It takes a great edge and all that stuff. Uh, but on a Bear Ops knife, it is an upgrade, and I'm excited about that. So I really want to see Bear and Son uh, kind of rise to the fore and, and be successful, uh, more successful. They are an American company, and you know me, I have a I have a soft spot for family enterprises, especially it's a, a knife enterprise. And uh, so I, I want to see Bear and Son get, get the props they deserve. I have one Bear and Son knife. It's a Bally song. They make a lot of Bally songs, and they have a number of different levels of of, um, I don't want to say quality, but like they have a premium level and then a less uh, and a mid and then a, a low, I have one of the low level, uh, Bally songs and it's actually quite good. So, uh, check it out. I don't know. Let me know if you, if you get one of these Cali legal, uh, bear ops at knives, I'd be excited to see it. All right. Next, we're going to talk about, uh, some knives in the state of the collection. And then after that, we're going to go to five great folding knife pairings right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie Podcast. So this, mm, I would say in the last, I don't remember when, I just got a new knife. I was going to try and tell you when I got it. I don't even remember now. This week, these last two weeks have been a blur to me. So uh, I'm not sure when this came in, but I love it and I've been carrying it a lot. This is my new Emerson Tiger. The Emerson Tiger, look at this thing. You look at it, you think it might be a CQC 13 from that handle. One of my favorite Emerson handles, not for nothing. But then when you open up, you see it's got a beautiful upswept clip point blade, kind of reminiscent of the blade on the CQC 8, except it's got a longer swedge and a broader blade altogether. Uh, this knife is one that after, um, after Ernest Emerson designed it and started making it, this is the knife he carried in his pocket for years. I have it on good. Uh, I have it on good word from our good friend Edwin. This was the main EDC for uh, Ernest Emerson for years, and until he, I think, until he made the Carnivore, and he started carrying that. Um, very appealing knife to me visually. Uh, and then once I got it in hand, I was like, oh, I really, I really see what the what the benefit of this knife is. Now, if you look at the blade. To, to how it's attached to the handle. It's very low slung. You see the spine of the blade is, is almost like a quarter inch, maybe, maybe a little bit more under the, under the back strap of the handle, which push, pushes the edge down further. So when you cut with this knife, it's almost like cutting with a kitchen knife in that your knuckles are almost clear of, of the line of that blade. And it really aids and accelerates cutting. Now, what have I done? What kind of cutting have I done with this? Box cutting, that's it. And, and I'm not talking about cutting cardboard either. I'm just talking about opening boxes, cutting tape. And so I haven't had much experience with this knife yet, but I was, I was surprised in two ways when I used this to open up the Amazon packages of dog food and other stuff that came uh, the past couple of days. And that is, it cut before I expected it. And I think that has to do with the uh, low slung aspect of the blade. The fact that the blade is kind of uh, below the spine, the spine of the blade is below the spine of the handle. And then also, I mean, it is just obscenely sharp, just screamingly sharp. And this is something I've noticed on um, recent Emerson's and by recent, I don't, I can't give you years, but basically since they went uh, single detent, I think that was uh, sometime in 2016. And uh, the single detent allows you to, I'm gonna use my other hand, just flip it open with your thumb. Now, older Emersons like this CQC 13 here, you can see the similarity. The CQC 13, this is an older one from 2013. You definitely have to slow roll this out, wave it out or flick it with some wrist because it's got that double detent that Emerson did for years and years and years. The double detent is a detent on the um, lock bar, and then you can see it right there, a detent on the other side, right by the pivot. 
and that was to uh, intended to help keep the blade in because these are hard use folders meant for operators and high speed type people. Uh, the idea is that extra um, detent would help stop it from coming out, though you can you can't just do that. So I'm not sure how successful that was for them, um, but it does aid in the feel of that hydraulic opening, which I do like. So I've I've never forced myself to decide what I like better, the single detent or the double detent, but there is something gratifying about just flipping it out. Uh, since they've gone double detent, this is a long setup. Since they've gone single detent, I think they've been making their knives sharper. It seems like they've been backing this relief edge, this uh, cutting edge back a little. Now look at, if you're watching this, you'll see that on the CQC 13, the uh, cutting edge is more shallow. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to see here. It's more shallow than the, uh, the Tiger. The Tiger presents a lot more edged steel than the other, and it slips through things like you wouldn't believe. So I've noticed that in my um, Appalachian, which is a recent uh, build. I've noticed that in my Super CQC 15, also a recent build, and then, and then also on my Elvia. I think they're sharpening them sharper. I think they're making them more thin behind the edge. And you know, um, the Emerson edge is always chisel. The blade is sometimes a chisel ground blade, like on the CQC7, you know, where you see one flat side, completely flat side, and then you see on the other side, you see all the grinds. Well, um, most of the Emersons are V-ground all the way down to the edge, and then they terminate in a chisel grind. I think that they are making that chisel grind shallower and just sharper. And um, I love it. I love it. I'm a big fan. So this is getting tons of pocket time these days. And uh, when I received this, I did what I do with all my Emersons, which is take off the clip and sand down the G10 on the handle side, usually from about the choil to right under the clip. Used to be I would do it just right under the clip where it made contact, but still uh, the sharp, uh, the these edges here, the edges uh, of the top and bottom of the handle, when they're uh, abrasive G10, as you bring them in and out, you know, they just saw your pocket. Uh, on, on a number, you know, not only under the clip, but on the sides of the handle. So I just take it and uh, knock it down a little bit so that I can uh, carry it and not destroy my my wardrobe, which, uh, you know, I can't afford to destroy any clothes right now because in any case. So there we go. This is the Emerson Tiger, and I'm, I'm thrilled that it's mine. Oh, mine. Okay, next, I want to show off a knife that our good friend, Joe, the knife whisperer, Joe Frazier, um, sent to me to check out. And, you know, he's a smart man. He thought maybe I would buy it from him too. But I think, I think, I don't know. So check this out. This is a beautiful knife right here. What do you, what do you think this is? Yes, yes, indeed. This is the ProTech SNG, ProTech Strider SNG, but it's in beautiful G-Mascus Micarta. I'm mean, not G-Mascus, G-Carta, my Carta. G-Carta is a uh, company name of a, of a gentleman who makes all of these exotic my Cartas. This one is called Patriotic something or other. I can't remember exactly what it is, but uh, just take a look at that. It's just so beautiful. And if you're not looking at it, it's it looks like a topographical map, kind of, uh, but it's in, in red, white, and blue my Carta. And I don't know how he gets these swirly, crazy patterns in it, but um, I think it's really beautiful. And it and it jacks up the value of this knife. Um, that and the mother of pearl push button there. Look at that. I mean, this knife just reeks of class. Look at this. And of course, it pops open with with serious authority, like all Protex do. I, I brought out a couple of uh, knives to show with this one because this is the first time, believe it or not, I've ever had an SNG in, ha in hand. I've owned a couple of these. This is the SMF, the larger version. And uh, I was thrilled not only to check out this new ProTec with, uh, with, the, with the G Carta, but also to, to feel the size of the SNG. And um, I really like it. I'm, I'm still more of an SMF man here. I like the I like the size of this a little bit better, but uh, the SNG, I mean, you can't argue with the SNG 
And uh, right here, ProTech has done a beautiful, beautiful job with it. Of course, it's 154 CM, as ProTech almost always uses. And I'm a big fan of that steel. It gets crazy sharp. It's just a great all-arounder. It's tough. It's easy to ma easy to maintain. Takes a great edge. Holds a great edge. So 154 is a great great steel. Uh, I also want to compare it to another another auto from Protec. This is the first run of the Rock Eyes a couple years ago. Um, they just redid the Rock Eye uh, in a you know in this size. They just came out with another run of them recently, and I think that is in. S35, I could be mistaken. This is in CPM D2, and uh, it has the same, comes out with the same authority as the uh, authority, as this uh, SNG. And I wanted to show it next to it because uh, I love what ProTech does, how they do these collaborations, these auto collaborations with designers and makers who otherwise wouldn't be making auto knives, like Les George and the Rock Eye. And, uh, and Strider and the SNG. I love ProTech. Dave Wattenberg is such a nice guy. He was on the show and, and I just think he knows what he's doing. He's got great instincts and I think, he, I think every project he touches is gold. So, um, so thank you, Joe, for loaning me this gorgeous uh, SNG and valuable SNG. I, uh, I will let you know if I'm gonna purchase it, but I, uh, otherwise I say, I'm not going to carry it because I don't want to damage this side. <laughs> I know I'll put snail trails and all sorts of scratches on the uh, on the aluminum side. Oh, let me just show you something real quickly. They also um, echoed the same construction that Strider uses, that famous construction where one side is just all G10. There's no backspacer, and uh, it comes all the way to the to the titanium or aluminum side. They sort of did it in reverse here. Where the um, where the G Carta is the is the flat side and the metal side, the aluminum is the one that wraps around. So still no backspacer, but just to have it reversed. So very cool feature. All right, last in uh, this week's state of the collection, um, I wanted to show off this knife. It's come up it's come up a couple of times, but I wanted to show off the knife that. Uh, really started it for me in terms of carrying, excuse me, in terms of carrying tactical folders. And uh, it's this right here. This is the SOG Stingray. The SOG Stingray I bought in the summer of 1991. And I was a sophomore in college that year. I, I had just got out, gotten out of my sophomore year of college. I know. <laughs> and uh, I was in Boston with a friend and we went to uh, the museum school for a, a summer program in painting. And we lived on Commonwealth Avenue in the Back Bay area, which is a cool part of a uh, cool part of Boston. At least it was back in the day. And um, there was a knife shop a, a couple blocks away from where we lived on Newberry Street. Yep. A knife shop in Boston, in Massachusetts. And uh, they had a lot of really cool things in there. And at that point, I had already seen a SOG knife because that summer... Uh, the summer of 1991, uh, Terminator 2 came out. And if you've ever seen Terminator 2, there's a part where uh, Sarah Connor is, is sitting uh, at a park bench. They're kind of, they've kind of escaped the last bit of action. The Terminator is over there cleaning his guns or whatever. And, and um, she's sitting there thinking, and it's when she decides to go kill uh, the guy who, who created Skynet. And she's just sort of playing with a SOG Bowie, just kind of sticking it in the table and kind of grinding it around. And then when she makes the decision, I'm going to go kill that guy, wham, she slams it in the table and walks off to go do the mission. I'm like, yo, you forgot your knife, your super cool knife. But I guess it was just for effect. And they zoom in on the knife. So I was already familiar with the SOG blade shape. And when I saw this, you know, I didn't really know SOG from a hill of beans at that time. But when I saw this in this knife store on Newbury Street in Boston, uh, I bought it with the money I didn't have. I had to have this thing. I got it and I carried it for, I don't know, that summer and the rest of that year. Uh, and it was dull. It was dull as can be. And this thing uh, lived in a case for years untouched until I resurrected it a little while ago. I'd say about a year ago and put an edge on it. And I don't know what... 
kind of steel they used here, but it did take me some time to put an edge on this knife. And uh, it's a great, great knife. I mean, 30 years later, and uh, it's not like I put 30 years of use on it, but 30 years later, it's still just as stout as can be. And this, uh, at this time, they had just started putting thumb studs on their larger folders. I think it was called the Wildcat. Bigger version of this, and it had a thumb stud on it. But this one still has the nail pull, which I think the nail nick, which I think is kind of neat, you know, to, to see a very tactical looking knife here. You got the silver bolsters and this, this grippy uh, um, craton, uh, you know, checkered handle and all this, and the recurve blade. And yet it's a nail nick. So I just think that's cool. They hadn't quite hit stride there with the one-handed opening folders at that time in 1991. And, uh, well, I'm just happy to have this in my in my collection. And I never carry it, but I'm going to start carrying it. It is kind of a little heavy. But uh, I'll just leave this here. A Seki City Japan SOG. So that's something to pay attention to. Seki City Japan uh, is known as uh, one, one of the knife capitals of the world. And uh, very happy to have this in the collection. All right. Anyone else have one of these? Let me know. Uh, I'd, I'd like to know what if you've been using it or if you used it uh, in the past and uh, how it performed. Because honestly, I put an edge on it, but I haven't used it since, since I was a youngin. All right. Next, let's talk about five great folding knife pairings. All right. So let's set this up. What is a folding knife pairing? Well, if you're like you and I, uh, if you're like you and me, you carry more than one knife because, well, maybe the main knife you're carrying or the knife you really want to carry is not appropriate for all situations, whether that's the task you might be using it for or whether it has to do with the people who might be around you when you pull it out to use it. So for instance, today I told you I'm carrying this, this, uh, for Max Scout, it's a big knife. Uh, I will also be doing a lot of errands. And if I need a knife, I do not want to scare people with this. So I have the Pete with me, which is not scary. And which everyone looks at and thinks is totally charming because it is. And it's got blue on it. And everyone knows colors aren't dangerous. So um, that's a knife pairing. Boom. It's like uh, steak and wine. Well, um, I want to talk about a few of the knife pairings recently that I was like, oh, this is the right combination of tools. Usually it's, uh, uh, I set up rules like can't be of the same brand. Uh, can't carry two Spydercos, for instance. I mean, that would be, uh, so can't be the same brand, can't be the same blade type. So if one of them has an upward sweep, the other one has to have a straight edge or a tanto. And, uh, and then lastly, this used to be a thing. Now this has sort of gone away for me, but for a while, it couldn't even be the same lock type. You know, it, it couldn't be two frame locks. That's just gauche. So, uh, uh, but I've changed that in recent days. To look at this pairing, you wouldn't know it. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, I have changed that one. I can, I can carry the same lock if I want. Before I get into these five pairings plus one, because there is a runner up, I just want to show this real quick. This is the um, this is the Benchmade bug out mine I've tweaked by putting the Allen Putnam scales, uh, micarta scales, and the uh, Snaggletooth tactical uh, deployer on it. Uh, the reason I'm showing this is because it is very frequently on me, but usually in a jacket or. Um, I mean, or in the waistband, but I wanted to show this because we're just coming out of winter and I was carrying this all the time, kind of unintentionally, because it was riding in the inside uh, pocket of my of my Duluth Trading Company jacket, uh, which has a pocket that looks like it was built just for this knife. Um, so I wanted to just show this is this is kind of part of the pairings of all of these of all of these pairings. Excuse me, that didn't come out right. All right. First up. You have the Cold Steel Recon 1. This one happens to be an OS 8. This is an early one. I took off the coating from the... This is one of the, the ones that had the cheap coating on it. Still an awesome knife. So uh, I have the Recon 1 here in Bowie and my own sharpening notch, which I understand they are doing now. And the Victorinox Alox Pioneer X. Alox... Uh, indicates that this is uh, 
uh, the aluminum handled kind. So that means it doesn't have the tweezers or the toothpick. Uh, it's the Pioneer model. And the X stands for the fact that it's got the, uh, ah, the scissors, which are hard to pull out. There we go. The scissors, which are definitely one of my very favorite tools uh, in the Swiss Army knife lineup of tools. Um, the Pioneer is set up mostly like a scout knife. And when I say scout, I mean like Boy Scout knife in that it has a main blade. It has a, uh, a uh, small screwdriver and can opener here. And then I'm going to close these so I don't cut myself on screen. And then it's got the awl. That, that's a great awl, by the way. Or punch. And then it has the cap lifter and large screwdriver and wire stripper. The wire stripper is that little notch there. So this is a great all-around knife. And of course, no one gets frightened when you pull out a Swiss Army knife. And uh, especially when it has one of these happy, happy fobs on it. Look at that. It's so happy and colorful. So you're looking at my Recon 1 saying, what's that at the end? Well, this is another Snaggletooth Tactical product. And right now, it's actually going through the paces. Uh, I'm just checking it out right now. Now, I've had... It's a, it's a ring pull, so it's it's to make it easier to, to pull the knife from your pocket. Incidentally, you can also use it for some Karambit-type uh, um, applications, though uh, it does put... It does put the the blade, at least for my medium hands, it does put the knife pretty low if you if you do it like that. And there's a bit of handle there. But um, as a pull, this thing is outstanding. Now this, if you've ever seen these, uh, this is called the cog ring. If you've ever seen the cog ring from Snaggletooth Tactical on a on a um, on a Recon One, you probably haven't seen it with this this flange on it. This is an addition that uh, I think it's coming out. If it's not already out, it will be coming out very shortly. This is an addition to the cog ring that allows you to carry this deep pocket. And it is very, very comfortable. Now, I, I hadn't thought to do this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and show it off how it works. It just, eh, okay. Next time I'll show it, I haven't planned it, but it drops into the pocket. And instead of using the clip here, instead of using the pocket clip and then having all of that sticking out of the pocket, look at me, I'm carrying a karambit style knife. When you, when you put this thing in your pocket, you use that flange as the clip and it hangs really low in the pocket like that. And it's undetectable, but, but you can kind of press into your fabric and just draw it really easily. And then if you have a Snaggletooth Tactical MF, the pocket deployer, you know, you can whip it open right there. Um, I really like this addition. I like that flange and I'll get more into that later. It does not, it does not really hinder you from flipping it around either. And it, it creates a great way of arresting movement, you know, because it widens that area for your thumb. So great carry pair right here. This is the Recon One by Cold Steel, a classic. I love this knife in all of its iterations. Um, I have a couple of the very large ones, uh, the XLs in um, XHP steel, which are kind of coveted. I didn't realize when I when I got them how coveted they would become. Uh, but hopefully under GSM, Cold Steel will start making the Recon 1 XLs again. Okay, next carry combo. Uh, maybe, maybe the most refined and classy of the bunch is TRM Adam, look at this. I got the, uh, the the forest green wing scales, which are amazing, contoured and textured just beautifully. So the TRM Adam, which is a great knife, beautiful utility knife and, uh, well, not utility knife, but a knife that you can use for all sorts of utility chores, but also you could drop this in your, in your pocket and wear it with a suit. It's nice and light, nice and thin and extremely capable. I was so lucky to get this on the secondary market. I'm, you know, I'm not the early bird. I am missing drops all the time. Or or it's like uh, I'm hedging about whether I should get something and then the drop comes and goes and then I decide I want it and it's gone. Well, after I spoke with Marianne Halpern on the show, I really wanted one of these and I couldn't find one. And then one day I did and jumped on it. This came originally with an olive drab flat micarta scale, which I like a lot, but 
I really like this wing pattern. You can go on their website and they have a whole bunch of different re replacement scales. And one of the very unique and interesting um, points about TRM, which is Three Rivers Manufacturing out of uh, uh, Massachusetts, is that all you have to do is remove this screw and this screw and just lift off the scale and you can swap scales just like that. There is no, this is just a hole that slips over the pivot. There's no um, capturing element here. So you can just do that. And on this side, all you do is remove that screw and these two pocket clip screws and uh, you remove the pocket clip and the scale and you can swap scales in five minutes with these things. It's pretty awesome. And uh, because of that, they offer tons of different scales. They know we're, they know what we're like. They know that we can't just have one knife. So if you have one TRM Atom, you can actually just be satisfied with that and just get a whole bunch of different scales and just swap them in. Unless you're looking for the unicorn of the TRM Atom lineup, which is the, the PVD coated, the black coated one. Very, very beautiful. Um, next is, uh, the second part of this pairing is my extremely classy and beautiful, um, GEC number 47 Viper in in this black plum bone, which I could just get lost looking at this. It's kind of like that autumn jig bone I like so much. And it's got this interesting kind of crosshatch uh, um, uh, jigging in the handle for texture. It does supply great texture. Now, this was a um, another drop that I missed. Uh, I've been waiting for GEC to, to redo the 47 Viper for years, and then they did, and I missed it. Uh, I'm not quite sure how, you know, I don't, I just don't lurk by the, by the computer hitting the refresh button. But our good friend Mike Latham over there at collectorknives.net had this. This was a factory second. Um, I believe there's a, there's a little crack right here in the bone. So they couldn't sell this straight as new. I think they do this a bit. They'll send this as like a store model uh, to the purveyors and they put, they stamp an S. Oh, where is it? They stamp an S in the tang there. See that? S right there. And uh, I believe that's for second or store edition or whatever it is. But uh, it, it sort of signifies that this is not uh, for sale necessarily for regular sale because it's not perfect. I don't care. I'm not perfect. I don't need perfection. I just need this. And I'm so happy to have it. Uh, thanks again, Mike, for making this available to me. Super sharp, beautiful, and my favorite, favorite uh, GEC design. It's got that nice three inch blade, which is pretty big for a slip joint. And uh, it goes beautifully in this pairing because you have the straight edge of this, um, of the Viper of this Warncliffe, and then you have this nice sweeping uh, edge of the TRM Atom. And uh, even though the TRM Atom is, we all know it as a charming little knife, uh, this you could see pulling this out at the office and going like that to use it could uh, raise some feathers. Um, or, but this, you pull this out, people are like, man, I knew Bob was a class act, but I didn't even know, I didn't know he was that classy. So that's why I carry that, just to impress people. That, of course, is a joke, but I love that pairing right there. TRM Adam and the number 47 GEC. Next up, this is one that I carried recently and really uh, was excited about. Two knives that I um, adore, and together I was thinking it's the magic combination. So I'll show it right now. Here is the Arcane Design Antimatter Folding Dagger. Sharp on both sides, you know about it. I've been talking about it a lot recently um, and carrying it a lot recently. And it is funny, you know, carrying this for three or four days in a row and then going back to a knife that isn't sharp on the back edge, um, you do have to rethink. Because when you go back to the dagger, you're used to closing a knife like this and touching the back of the blade. So when you when you go back to the dagger, you have to remember that when you close it, you just rely on that awesome action and just close it like that. Otherwise you're, you know, messing with the, with the, with the aquilion there. It's not, it's not the greatest. So yeah, flip it and close it. Now here's a funny thing about this knife. 
I like to try all different ways of opening, you know, I'll try it with that, I'll try it with my thumb. It's a great thumb opener and that, but I did it. I've cut here, let's see, can you see? I have a couple of cuts right here on my palm because absent-mindedly I've held it like this and flipped it and as it comes open, the back edge cuts my palm. I've done that three times, yes, three times. I, I need three times to learn a hard lesson. So um, now I think I have it down. This antimatter uh, designed by Israel Bacchus and Felix Archibeke, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, over there at uh, uh, Something Obscene Company is uh, perfectly symmetrical and just perfectly gorgeous. I've already got a couple of little snail trails in it. I look forward to this uh, bronze uh, or this sort of black and bronze anno starting to wear. And um, these are still available. You can get them on the Arcane Design website. And uh, they have three different versions. This and then two black bladed versions. One where the whole thing is black and then one where the blade is black and you get the beautiful bronze here. Uh, made by Riot, you know it's gonna be just tremendous. So if you like the design, you know it's gonna be a super high quality knife. So that knife with this knife, the Finch Runtley. So obviously two sort of opposites here. Um, you've got the, this wedge-like Warncliffe and then you've got that dagger. And this, who does not think this is the most charming knife ever? Finch, the company has a history in watches. So this is a loom right here. If you, if you look at it uh, in the dark, if it's charged, it glows, which is pretty cool but it's just a great blade, a sharp, great blade. And it's not too threatening. You look at this thing, it's not too threatening. Uh, this was my unboxing knife for Christmas 2020, all the kids toys with all the straps and bands and crap you gotta cut. This just mowed through all of it uh, and, and you know lovingly. Usually the unboxing knife is a small one because it ends up getting put down and I don't need a big blade just be sitting around. One thing before I move on that I love about the Finch is that it's it's a straight line here and a straight line here. So the bottom and the top are just two straight lines that converge at the pommel. And the only thing that interrupts that is this nice low profile flipper. So big fan of this knife, the Finch Runtley. This one I, I won from the Apex Pass Around Group. It was my first knife from them. And uh, when in the pass around groups, when the knife has done the rounds, oftentimes they will give them away. And I won that one, it was, it was nice. I don't win anything. Okay, the next combo is three knives. The main one being the Emerson Elvia. So if I have this Emerson Elvia with these beautiful uh, blades and such handles, um, micarta handles, if I'm carrying this in my right front pocket, I feel secure if I get in a fight and I need it, but I feel insecure for everything else because without a nearly four inch blade on me, it's like I'm naked. So I'll have this in one in my right pocket and then this, this is the Civivi Asticus riding in the waistband. Now this is a very thin and uh, thin and large knife. It's a 3.75 inch blade and, and it's uh, you know, D2, it's the, you know, the, you know, the Civivi Asticus, but it makes a great in the waistband carry because it's slender, but it's long. And for me, I always say they keep my pants up because, you know, when you're between belt notches and things are loose and you're pulling up your pants, it drives me nuts. So if you have this in there riding at three o'clock or so, you know, you have a capable large knife on you, but it's also thin and you don't feel it there, but it does help keep your pants up. <laughs> So that and the Elvia, which of course is an extremely uh, tactical use knife, um, make a great carry combo. The only thing is, is that what if you're somewhere and you can't use this because it's terrifying to look at, and then you pull this out and it's just too big and people will make assumptions. So I've carried this combo with this beautiful little case peanut in CV steel. I got this, CV is their chrome vanadium. It's a uh, high carbon, I think it's 1095. Uh, got this from someone on Blade Forums a while back. It's super sharp and it's beautifully patinaed. And I love this, uh, I don't know what it's called, honey bone or something. I love that, that bone handle. This is one of the pocket worn versions, meaning the, the bolsters are kind of rounded off a little bit, pre-rounded off for you. 
No, not like ripped jeans, but sort of pre-rounded. And uh, a great knife. You pull this out, people go, oh, oh. So, you know, if if these are too much for the for the sheeple, you pull out the case, case uh, peanut there. And all is well. All right, the last one. The last one before I get to the runner-up, that is, is also two newish knives to me, but I've been carrying them a lot and a lot together. And that is the Spyderco Yojumbo, which is a big Yojimbo, basically. Um, S35VN, you've got the uh, compression lock. And with that heavy blade, it's so fun to use this compression lock because it just closes so easily. Um, so all I did with this one is knock down the center uh, partition here. It was basically two swales for your fingers to fit in. And then this this swale here, it kind of was really cramping my style. So I got rid of this one. There's no steel liner under that part of it. So you can grind it down. Same thing over here. I could grind this down if I wanted to. And um, well, this is an excellent utility knife, but also I carry it because it's kind of a you know, menacing tactical knife. And I just like that, that style design. So this knife with the new CRKT Pilar makes a great carry combo because with the Yojumbo, you have that super sharp hollow ground straight edge, which, you know, is just a wonderful, wonderful utility style blade, as well as, uh, you know, heaven forbid you had to use it to stick into someone's leg. It would be a great design to do that with, but also the CRKT is small, charming, a Vox design, incidentally, and it's got that beautiful, beautiful uh, belly, just a long belly on this blade. It's a three inch, so it's a little bit bigger than the, uh, than the first two iterations of the Pilar, and I guess about the same size as that flipper they came out with in D2. Um, but this one's on bearings, opens so nicely, and is just fun to fidget with and uh, does a great job when you need it to actually cut. This comes in two different models, uh, one with um, 8CR13 MOV steel, that's what this is, and you can tell from uh, the backspacer. It's it's like raw aluminum. It also comes in a D2 version uh, on which that back strap, uh, that backspacer is anodized gold or, or bronze, something like that, it just looks different. And that's how you sort of, uh, that's your indicator as to what steel you got. If you if you didn't read the specs, which is what happened to me when I first got that, I started, uh, you know, made a video and said that it was D2 and someone corrected me saying, no, the D2 one has the bronze backstrap. So uh, always grateful to get that kind of information from listeners. I get it wrong. You know, I'm just sitting here talking and, uh, and you know, showing off knives and I get, I get, I get a lot of stuff wrong. And so when I hear... When you hear me get stuff, something wrong like that, please let me know because I want to know. I, I want to have the knowledge. Okay, the last pair, the runner-up that I'm going to go through, I know we've gone long on this, is, uh, I'm just going to show this quickly, is a runner-up because it's damn heavy. And that is the uh, the XM24 uh, Hinderer with that uh, beautiful, beautiful, just perfect Warren Cliff blade. In M390, incidentally, not to steel drop, not to name drop. And as I showed before, the Concept Pelican. Now, these two knives are both girthy. And uh, even this, you know, the Pelican for a little knife is pretty fat here. And this is pretty fat. And they're both, you know, kind of weighty. There's no weight reduction in either of these. There's there's no effort put towards that. And... Uh, so incidentally, this this will, unless you have something holding your pants up, like the Civivi Asticus, uh, this will pull your pants down unless they are tight. Here, the reason I like this combo, though, you have that beautiful four-inch straight edge there on the, on the hinderer, and then you have sort of the opposite here on the concept, this Tanto. You got the straight, and then you have the upsweep. So you get a lot of different utility with these knives, and you got you get a lot of different utility with all of these pairings, and I think that's the idea. Now, it's a lot more utility than is necessary for my lifestyle, um, but at least I'm prepared. Who knows? Who knows what kind of tasks might jump my way uh, in the middle of the day? And uh, well, oftentimes I sit there hoping some sort of task will come. Hey, do you need that cut? No? Are you sure you want that in one piece? Uh, you know, that kind of thing comes up all the time. And 
So do you pair knives? Is this something you think about when you choose a knife in the morning? Uh, do you think about what else you're going to carry just in case what you carry is not adequate or is too much for the sheeple? Let us know. Call that listener line. Call, uh, send me an email, bob at the knife and let us know. I want to know. Uh, and in the meantime, I will be coming up with other combos uh, for myself to carry and show off. But do call 724-466-4487 and let us know what your favorite carry combination is. I have spoken quite a long time. So that's it for me today and for this uh, midweek supplemental, episode 205. Thanks so much for joining us. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Uh, that really does help. That sharing the video does help, and it, it widens the reach of the show. And if you want people to know how wonderful the world of knife collecting can be, please do that. All right, for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying have a wonderful week, and definitely, whatever you do, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.